Hi guys, today this is the second day with my old lovely <laughs> Suzuki Bondi GSF 650S motorbike from 2005. And today I want to share with you guys how to clean uh, the fuel tank and I want to share with you some dirty little secret <laughs> which is hiding uh, inside in the lock. Eh? Of course, first you have to release the gasoline fully, <laughs> fully, fully, fully empty. And then you have to remove the fuel level sensor, okay? And this automatic uh, um, vacuum control uh, tap. Few words about uh, this uh, sensor. The average lifetime of this sensor is about uh, 10 years, not more. And the reason for that is it's really simple. This arm, okay, with this drum on the end, this is floating together with your uh, fuel. When you drive your bike, of course, this uh, arm is, is moving like really crazy inside in your tank. This big movement, it's happening here on the middle. After, uh, let's say, 10 years or something like this, uh, you have to take it out and order an original Suzuki made sensor. So, no aftermarket no Chinese, no Italian, nothing. Only the original Suzuki uh, sensor. And the reason for that is really simple. You see, the sensor itself, it's opened. So this <laughs> electric signal here, it's inside in your gasoline tank. So if uh, you are buying some kind of uh, Chinese aftermarket sensor, what can happen if one line here is broken, this can ignite your gasoline in your tank. And how you can test this sensor, it's really simple. You just have to hook up here uh, your digital multimeter to this end or measure here exactly on the bottom of the sensor and then just play with the arm really slowly. Okay, and then if you see your uh, multimeter is showing a big jump, you have to replace uh, this sensor, of course. The next one is this uh, uh, vacuum controlled automatic tap. This is like, um, <laughs> you can hate it and you can love it. Uh, actually, if you ask me, I, I hate it because um, uh, with this vacuum controlled uh, solution, I, I don't have a possibility to close this tap. This is the pipe which is connected to your uh, carburetor. So when you start your uh, motorbike, of course, the engine will create a lot of uh, vacuum in the um, inlet, okay? And then this vacuum will pull down this tiny small mem membrane inside in the body. And uh, on the top of this membrane, there is a really the tiny small uh, needle, which will open the way for the fuel from the filter to this pipe. Most of the case, nothing wrong with this uh, automatic tap. But there is few repair guys <laughs> in the workshops uh, with a really bad, uh, really wrong hand. These bikes have a ton of braking and I only want half of that drag that I showed you before. So, back at it. So, what they can do with this tap? If this filter is broken on a bottom, yeah, then of course all the dirt and the, the dust and the small metal particles or even paint or whatever, or this gnu, gnu, gnu something from the German gasoline can go inside into the tap. Of course, the, this pin cannot close, okay, back the way of the fuel, and then your carburetor, it's always under pressure. So my one, it's okay, uh, I, I test it. Just remove this four uh, small screw here and check your membrane and this uh, pin and uh, the seat for this uh, pin and then, then it's okay. How you can clean out the fuel tank? It's a really simple process. Of course, first you have to release the gasoline, as I said, and then you have to uh, fill it up with, let's say, one liter of water or uh, around one or two liter of water. And then you have to put inside about a half liter, okay, uh, simple dish, dishwasher soap. 
and uh, in this case a cheaper is better because the cheaper dishwasher soaps that don't have any kind of special additives for <laughs> take care of your skin and your uh, kitchen and your cat and your dog then you have to find some kind of industrial type uh, bathroom cleaner they are used mostly in a schools in our hospitals and you know in in this uh, semi-industrial areas from that you have to drop inside about 200 milliliter or maximum 400 milliliter okay and then immediately you have to put inside more water like uh, one more extra liter and then you have to close back the tank okay and then you have to shake your tank like crazy but like this because you know uh, now this uh, two hole is open here where is the sensor and where is the tap so in this way all of your uh, special uh, cleaning fluid it will stay inside in your tank and shaking for five minutes uh, or ten minutes uh, about uh, 10 kilograms this is a very good <laughs> exercise so then you don't have to release the water and this uh, mixture from your tongue. So what you have to do, just find some uh, um, cloth or rubber, something uh, outside, and then wash with your high pressure washer and close this hole. Try to keep um, the nose somewhere here, okay? Because in this way, uh, the high pressure water and this high speed water will grab a lot of air also inside so what will happen in your tank these uh, bubbles and this uh, large amount of air and uh, water and chemical mixture will do uh, a lot of movement inside in your tank and you know these small bubbles are acting like a tiny tiny explosion yeah so they will remove everything from everywhere then of course you have to release this mixture from your tank and you will see <laughs> unbelievable amount of rust and dirt and the dust and whatever what will come out uh, with the water together then of course you have to fill up uh, the tank a uh, couple of times with uh, clean water okay let's say two three four times and then you have to release everything from the tank and then you have to find uh, some kind of uh, digital controlled or at least uh, temperature controlled analog temperature controlled uh, heat gun okay i really like this unit from the wagner uh, because on this uh, heat gun you can control the airflow and the temperature and it has a, a, a cooling uh, cycle so when you switch it off of course this uh, computer inside will not allow your heat gun to destroy itself okay so this will cool down the pistol when you drop it uh, after the job what you have to do with this uh, you have to adjust the temperature to 110 degree not more ah, of course before you do this you have to remove the the lock from your tank eh? so this is really important because you know this uh, small door here it will uh, block you okay from uh, you know you see what's the issue and of course after this uh, washing cycle what you did uh, with your tank uh, uh, there is no gasoline inside <laughs> this for sure because the dishwasher soap can bound to the gasoline okay and to the water and this one can bound to the water and to the rust and to other um, stone kind of uh, small particles so after when you wash it out uh, fully with your high pressure washer and with this lot of air and with this bubble and with this uh, storm inside and you clean out the tank with uh, clean water at least uh, three four time i'm i'm telling you there is no even one gasoline particle inside so you have to drop here your heat gun try to keep on 90 degree with the tongue because in this case the hot air will go to here and also will go to there so if you do like this okay <laughs> this is a really bad example let me show you so what will happen if you do like this of course the back side of your tongue 
will never dry out, but the front part of the tank will be really hot. Why I said 110 degree? Because the boiling uh, temperature for the water, of course, uh, it's 100 degree. And this extra 10 degree will uh, disappear on this huge metallic surface. So the inside temperature will be around uh, 70 or 80 degree, not more. So when you do this job, you just have to check your fuel tank everywhere. If, if you feel uh, the, the hot surface, uh, what you still can touch, and this is good because this uh, will not destroy your painting and your lock. After, when you cleaned out your tank, of course, you can uh, wait until it's uh, cooled down, but slowly. The next topic is this little dirty secret inside in this lock. Huh? <laughs> uh, story time. Three years ago, I thought it's a good idea to pick up my bike and go around in Europe. So, to Poland, to Czechoslovakia, and to Hungary, and to Austria, and uh, back to home to, to Germany. When I arrived to Poland, <laughs> of course in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> where nobody is living, my bike just stopped. After five minutes, I started my bike and everything was normal. So <laughs> I thought, okay, this is maybe some kind of uh, water or something inside in a gasoline or some computer issue, who knows. And this is how I arrived <laughs> to the next city. So five, 10 minutes of driving, five minutes waiting and five, 10 minutes driving. Then I figured out if I'm not driving my bike like a crazy, so with the maximum 60 or 70 kilometers per hour, Nothing happened, but when I reached the 100 or 110 or 120 on a highway, <laughs> the motorbike was completely shut off. I find a really small uh, motel somewhere and uh, on the next morning, so I take out the spark plugs and uh, I take off the carburetor, I cleaned everything, I checked everything one by one, the computer, the cables, the, the accu, the, you know, everything, and I couldn't find nothing. Uh, I filled up the, the gasoline tank. After 10 minutes, of course, <laughs> the bike again stopped. And on my confused moments, I got really angry, so I started to play with the key, you know. So <laughs> I played with the key and I opened the tank and guess what happened? I couldn't open the lock. Hmm, <laughs> how this uh, fuel tank can generate a lot of vacuum inside because, you know, the Suzuki Bandit has a lot of uh, uh, pipe which is connected to the uh, to the tank. Huh? You see this? This is the hole to release the water from this section. So when you wash your bike or you get a rain or you get uh, snow or whatever. Now this one is the pressure balance hole for the fuel tank. And how it's working? Maybe you can see, but there is a small uh, uh, silicon gummy um, part here. You can see, okay? So how, how this is working? This gasket, this uh, rubber ring here, will close completely this big hole. This silicon rubber um, part, this small puppy, will close only if you close your lock. So how, how on earth <laughs> the pressure balancing is working if you close this uh, silicone with your, with your lock? You see this uh, tiny small hole here? Okay, this one. This is where this uh, little dirty secret is living. <laughs> Let me show you. So the dirty little secret is living inside around your lock. Let me show you. You can remove the top section of the lid. Yep, just like this. And take care of this uh, little small piece here. The vacuum from your fuel tank is connected to this small hole. On the other side of this lock lid or door or whatever you see this small line around 
So one wall is outside and one wall is inside. Okay, and this is a really tiny wall, so it's about uh, half millimeter high. So these two wall will create here inside a very, very tiny, very small channel. On this plastic part, this one, it's actually a rubber. You see? So this is a, act like a kind of gasket. But uh, this gasket here on the middle, where is this channel is running, okay, this is sectioned. Air and the vacuum, of course, just can pass really, really slowly, okay? So the vacuum is came here and uh, the outside pressure is came from this direction, yeah? So let me show you the other side. You see this channel around your lock? This is where the outside uh, air can go inside into your tank. And what the purpose of this trick? Of course, this gasket with these uh, sections here will block the water, the dirt, the dust, the spiders and the mosquitoes, whatever. So, <laughs> what can happen? Of course, all the dust and spiders, whatever, they will block these small areas here. And of course, later on, when you have a lot of dirt inside, the outside air cannot go into your fuel tank. But after this nightmare, <laughs> believe me, I'm checking this uh, lock in almost every two months because who knows what can go inside. Actually, in, in my nightmare <laughs> ride, I find inside a, a dead uh, spider with his uh, small, uh, very small nest or something. And in another end here, I find a lot of uh, uh, mood and dust and uh, small wood particles. Okay, but this trick is not ending here. Let me show you where the other part of this uh, trick is hided. Huh? And you just have to pop up this part. And here is a really small spring. Very small one, very weak. Let me show you. Huh? A small spring. And then under this small spring, there is a little, little, tiny, tiny valve. Eh? So this is a really sophisticated and complicated tiny system to feed your fuel tank with the proper pressure, the proper amount of air and make sure the gasoline cannot go out on the same hole. So let me show you where is the other end. Now you can understand this uh, square type of hole on this gasket, yeah? So what this small uh, valve is doing inside in this uh, locker lid? Of course, this will release the high pressure vaporized gasoline from your tank, okay? So I'm telling you, you must to check your um, fuel tank locker every year. If you don't want to blow up or if you don't want to suck in the middle of nowhere in the midnight in uh, 10 degree <laughs> and then figure out what's going on. <laughs> so the end of my story in, in this uh, case, it was uh, really crazy because uh, what I did, I opened uh, the lid just a bit. Okay, I take it out the key and this is how I drive my bike to the next uh, big city. To, to figure out what's going on with this uh, locker. Ah, by the way, this is why you have to avoid uh, from over greasing your um, lock here, because if you put inside uh, too much grease into the keyhole, of course this grease can go back uh, from the lock into this small hole and then uh, with the mixture of, of the gasoline and with the water and with the air, of course this can uh, mm, stuck down. Eh? Okay, let me show you other part of this uh, little <laughs> dirty secret inside. <laughs> Believe me, there is no more. Eh? You will find here this plate. Yeah? Under this plate, there is a tiny ball, a metal ball inside, 
in this chamber and you see the same type of solution to slow down the flow rate. So this tiny holes and again a bigger hole and then a very tiny hole again and then this bowl and this uh, chamber. So what this doing actually? As you drive your bike, okay, this uh, ball will jump inside. This is actually like a um, secondary emergency uh, pressure release system. If your bike is going normally, then these other uh, solutions here, okay, it's far away enough to balance out the pressure differences between the outside world and between the, the fuel tank inside. But when you shake your bike, okay, you drive off-road or on a really um, shitty road in Poland, for example, then this system has to provide an extra solution to release this extra heavy high pressure from your gasoline tank. And this is what this uh, tiny ball is doing. There is a lot of uh, crazy, sophisticated, really smart engineering is going around this part. On the end, every year you must to open this lock system here and clean out all these uh, tiny small parts. Because if you don't do it, what can happen? Or you will build up a vacuum inside in your gas tank, like what's happened with me in the midnight, in the middle of nowhere, or you will blow up your fuel tank exactly right into your face. I'm telling you, I, I couldn't find nobody on YouTube and nobody on the internet who is, is talking about, huh? <laughs> Japanese, Japanese, eh? <laughs> unbelievable. They are really smart guys. I really like them. It's the time to put together everything and make sure this spring is going back to the right place. And then you keep this plate with your fingernail here, okay? And then you just have to drop the tongue here like this, okay? So on this way, you pressurize the spring and uh, and the spring will go back to the right uh, position so then the two screw i now have clue what this small metal part is doing inside but i'm 100 percent sure <laughs> this is also some kind of uh, uh, engineered solution for some problem who knows so then on this gasket, you see these uh, uh, small uh, rubber pins. Eh? This one must be go back to to here. Here is the here is the hole. You see that? And uh, this one, and the third one is going to here. So not like this, just like this. And now this uh, other type of spring just came to here and this is making this really nice uh, uh, actuated uh, movement okay and then this part make sure this small automatic uh, spring the valve is installed back on a correct way and then just put it back just like this Even I don't remember uh, there is uh, any page in the service manual <laughs> about uh, this lock, or maybe I just missed the, the page. Only three screw is holding the lead and the lock system to your gas tank, because these two, it's a, it's a dead uh, spot. Here one pin, eh? and here is nothing. So be careful with the screws, because uh, this specific uh, uh, Suzuki Bandit has different size of screws, yeah, you see? So the short, short, short must go to here, okay? The next small, it must go to here, and the three must go to the three mounting point. So let me drop it back. 
And you don't need to apply really crazy heavy torque. Double check. Okay, and okay, so now if I did a good job, then I can close this lid perfectly. Yep. Perfect. Ta da! Okay, um, I will not show you guys uh, how to install back uh, the, the tap and uh, this uh, sensor, it's uh, really straightforward. But uh, for the tap, um, the trick here, you see this uh, small indentation, this must go like this, okay? And for the fuel sensor, the arm, the arm must go like, uh, like this. Yep, be careful, just like this, and then you are done. Uh, make sure this surface is uh, clean and flat. And of course you can apply here a tiny bit of uh, black uh, silicone, which is, you know, uh, gasoline resistant and uh, oil resistant. Just add here a bit around this gasket and then uh, screw it back the tap. Just let me show you the bike itself. Uh, so what's the status now? Of course I replaced the, the uh, brake uh, disc and also the brake pads inside and I cleaned up everything. <laughs> if you believe or not, but you don't have to apply this heavy, uh, gunky, white, uh, sticky um, grease on your chain. Just simply keep it clean always and let's say after 300 or 400 kilometer maximum just wash it down, clean it with the high pressure air, okay, from the dust and then apply on it uh, a tiny bit of 80W90 gear oil and this will keep your chain in a perfect condition for many, many, many uh, miles or kilometers. This chain it's almost four year old or five year old. And it, it's, I'm telling you, it's act like new. Of course, this is a DID uh, chain, <laughs> pretty cool stuff. Uh, let me show you the front uh, brake system. Of course, I replaced almost all the parts, the new O-rings. Of course, I replaced the, the brake pads and I also replaced the brake uh, discs. Uh, so sorry guys if I didn't share with you but this is um, <laughs> a really boring <laughs> job and you know you just have to release this uh, two screw here and on the other side and then you can work on your brake and then you have to uh, take out this uh, axle from here and then you can take out your wheel and you can work on a brake disc. Please uh, just pay a big attention on the right amount of torque on these uh, screws here, yeah? You know, it's a not a big drama, it's only your life, eh? <laughs> Check the original service manual and adjust your uh, torque wrench to the specific uh, amount of torque. When you're installing back the disc, make sure this uh, yeah. hub here, it's clean from every dust and from every oxidation. So you have to clean the hub here around and even of course if you already taken out uh, your wheel check your uh, bearings here and the other bearings and also the the, the, the ceiling uh, rings and then you have to tide back the screws in three steps not in two or one step and of course apply on it a uh, thread locker so by the way uh, this is a really nice uh, brake disc from uh, braking it's made in Italy <laughs> and in Taiwan, <laughs> so it's a Italy-Taiwan uh, brake disc, but nothing wrong with them. It's machined uh, really nicely with a really modern uh, CNC technology. Every uh, machine work here on this disc is just, is just amazing and uh, half the price, like what you have to pay for the Brembo. Huh? And I didn't install back the uh, carburetors because I wanna work a bit uh, on the engine because I have some sorts of really tiny small oil leakage on the front of the uh, cylinder head. I think this uh, small uh, 
uh, rubber o-ring is <laughs> it's gone so i have to take off the cylinder head and uh, check uh, all the gaskets and all the all the ceilings let me show you the new exo system and you know what i will do a video about the, the installation of this uh, exo system because i really interested on the sound of <laughs> this muffler eh? of course <laughs> i hope you guys enjoyed see you next time bye Fucking pain.